to look at the last stages of cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. So we are moving towards our last topic in this chapter. And at the end of the lesson, students should be able to achieve learning outcome number four, which is to describe electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Okay, now let's take a look at the overview of cellular respiration. So we know that the main objective for respiration is to harvest the energy from glucose and make ATP. But from the previous components of a respiration, so you have go through the glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation and also citric acid cycles, neither of the cells generate much of an ATP. So it produces only four ATP and all by the substrate level phosphorylation. So if you look again, look again there are two ATP produced uh, from the glycolysis and for every turn of a citric acid cycle it produces one ATP and remember that we have uh, two molecules of a pyruvate produced um, by breaking down one molecule of a glucose so thus we have two molecules of acetyl-CoA that would enter the citric acid cycle so thus for one molecule of a glucose this will um, produce two atp in the citric acid cycles so up to here so it produces only four atp but what we have the most is the number of nadh and fadh2 yeah, produced and these two uh, electron carrier are going to enter the oxidative phosphorylations and they are going to make the most number of ATP out of this pathway okay, through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. Now let's take a look at the term first. Yeah? So the phosphorylations here means productions of ATP. Okay? So this process to generate an ATP is by adding inorganic phosphate into ADP okay, and produce ATP. And this formation is through the process of oxidation, which is transfer of electron from NADH and also FADH2. So these two electron carriers are going to transfer the electron okay, through the process of oxidation and that would generate the ATP. Okay. So this is um, the oxidative phosphorylations. There are two mechanisms involved. So number one involves the electron transport chain and also it involves chemiosmosis. So now let's look at electron transport chain, okay, the first mechanism of oxidative phosphorylations. So the electron transport chain, or I might just use the term ETC throughout the video, is a um, series of protein that transport the electron. And these collections of a protein complexes and organic molecules embedded in the inner membranes of a mitochondria. So the previous um, citric acid cycles that occur inside the matrix of mitochondria and for electron transport chain that occur in the inner membranes of a mitochondria. So we know that the mitochondria is a double membrane organelles. So take a look at this diagram. So this diagram, uh, this one here, showing the outer membranes of a mitochondria. And you can see the yellowed line here. This represents the inner membranes of a mitochondria. And so you can see comparing to the outer, so this inner membrane um, form the inward folding. And this inward folding is what we call as cristae. Okay. And uh, the functions of a crystal here to increase the surface area uh, of the inner membrane so that more and more protein complexes can be embedded. And you also can notice there are spaces between these two and this is what we call as intermembrane space. And these show the um, arrangements of protein complexes on the electron transport chain. So recall again, this is inner membranes of mitochondria. And I just draw one line here to represent the outer membrane. 
and the spaces between these two is what we call as intermembrane space. Okay, so you can see there are um, purple molecules here. So these are the protein complexes. So this one to represent protein complexes number one. So the one underlining here, this is protein complex number two. So this one protein complex number three. And this is protein complex number four. Okay, so looking at the uh, how it span the plasma membrane. So protein complex number one, three, and four is an integral protein. And it also acts as proton pump. So that's why on these three um, proteins, so you can see there are flow of hydrogen ion, which is the proton. Okay. And um, these three is an integral protein, but not for protein complex number two. So protein complex number two here, this is a peripheral protein. Okay, this is the only one that is protein, uh, peripheral protein. And also note there are uh, another molecules here, label Q here, this is actually UV quinone. So UV quinone or um, sometimes called as coenzyme Q, this is not a protein. And another one here, CYT here, this is cytochrome C. Cytochrome C. So this cytochrome C and also ubiquinone, this is a mobile carrier. So that's why you cannot see it reside in any of the complexes. Okay, so this is how the protein complex uh, arrangement in the um, inner membranes of a mitochondria but you just imagine there are lots and lots of this set of inner membrane a set of a protein complexes so this diagram show levels of free energy relative to the oxygen and also show levels of electronegativity so moving toward the right hand side of the graph which is down the chain here show a decrease in levels of free energy and increase in electronegativity. Okay, so if we compare like FMN here being on the left most with the cytochrome A3 on the right of the diagram here, so FMN they have high free energy but less electronegative compared to cytochrome A3 which have low free energy but high electronegativity. And the oxygen here having the most electronegative, which means yeah, having high electronegativity here means it attract more electrons, yeah, which is the uh, they have high affinity for electron. So they are much more hunger for electron. Okay. So another one thing here, if you look at the diagram. Each of these complexes consists of a multiple protein with electron carrier. Like protein complex number one here, okay, it consists of a FMN, flavin mononucleotide, and also iron sulfur. Okay, protein complex number two, they have iron sulfur. Protein complex number three, uh, they have uh, cytochrome B, iron sulfur, and cytochrome C1. And protein complex four, consists of a cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. So all of these CYT stand for cytochrome. Okay, so we begin with the NADH. Okay, so NADH, they carry the electron from the previous components of cellular respirations, which is from glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and citric acid cycle. So they carry the electron and feed the electron transport chain. Okay, so now NADH, they pass two electron to protein complex number one which is two fm and flavin mononucleotide so nadh give off two electron to fmn and oxidize to nad plus so upon receiving two electron from nadh so now fmn become reduced okay as it received the electron and the next iron sulfur here 
So iron sulfur they have high electronegativity compared to FMN. So it attract more uh, or it attract more uh, electron yeah, strongly toward themselves. So these electron are going to pass to iron sulfur. So now FMN become oxidized and iron sulfur become reduced. Okay. So these electron are going to pass from one carrier to another carrier and moving down the chain so this electron carrier here all of these electron carrier are going to alternately reduce and oxidize as they accept and donate the electron so now the electron reach into the cytochrome a3 okay and it give off two electron to the final electron acceptor here which is oxygen so oxygen okay, with uh, receiving two electron here and react with two hydrogen so it's going to produce one molecule of a water so this is the main reason why we need to breathe in oxygen okay because oxygen is playing a crucial role as the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain okay so um, water here having one molecule of oxygen so that's why you see the half equation here so half of the oxygen gas eh? half of the O2 okay so that is for an ADH okay so now take a look at how the electron flow giving off by the NADH so it's going to pass from one carrier to another carrier until received by the oxygen okay and produce one molecules of a water so what about FADH2 okay if we look at this diagram FADH2 does not fit the electron the same as an ADH an ADH pass electron to protein complex number one but FADH2 pass electron to protein complex number two okay so this is because an ADH are very good at donating the electron yeah, in the redox reaction and the electron is at high energy levels but FADH2 they are not as good as an ADH yeah, in donating the electron and the electron is at the lower energy level so that's why it can't transfer the electron to protein complex one instead it fit into protein complex number two so FADH passed two electron to protein complex number two which is uh, to the iron sulfur here and then it moved to Q, which is ubiquinone mobile carrier, and continue to protein complex 3 and 4, which is uh, to the cytochrome iron sulfur, and the next next electron until it received by the oxygen and produce molecules of a water. So beyond these two, eh, the first two complexes, eh, F and ADH and also FADH2, they are going to pass the electron and electron are going to travel exactly the same route eh, except for the first two because FADH2, they are not going to pass through protein complex number one and an ADH are not going to pass the electron to protein complex number two. Okay, And uh, this is the oxidized form, eh, NAD plus and also FAD. So the oxidized form NAD plus and also FAD, they are going to be reused again uh, in the glycolysis and also citric acid cycle and pyruvate oxidation and carry again uh, the electron to the electron transport chain here. Okay, so take a look at how the electron pass by the FADH2. Okay, until accept by the oxygen. Okay, so basically the electron carried by NADH and FADH2 in the electron transport chain they are going to move from less electronegative electron carrier to more electronegative electron carrier and through the process they are going to release the energy okay so in the next topic we are going to look what is the functions of this release of the energy